Greetings everyone, House here, and today I wanted to talk about those pesky perk problems. This is something I've seen come up a lot recently in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game community, and I thought I'd weigh in and give my two cents. But first, I would like to take a quick second just to thank everyone who watched my recent video talking about Leatherface and the issues with him. The response to that video was incredible. I did not expect that many people to see the video, let alone comment on it and give me feedback. I just wanted to take some time at the top of this video to make sure to let you know that I appreciate that feedback. Your support means more than you could ever know. But back to the topic at hand. This is going to be another off the top of my head video, so we're just going to dive right in. Perks in Texas Chainsaw Massacre game are a little disappointing. That seems to be the common sentiment that I see online. My biggest issues with the perks are as follows. The way Gun Interactive and Sumo have it set up, there are perk trees. You can navigate the tree and apply points that you earn via leveling up unlocking different skills. Each pathway kind of has a different feel to it and kind of funnels you into a certain type of play style. If you don't like the play style that you've unlocked, you can always respec. Inherently, I don't think there's anything wrong with having a perk tree that can add variety to gameplay, which is a very important thing, especially when you have a game where you're gonna be playing the same set of levels over and over, trying different builds with the same four or five characters. The issues that I have with the skill tree kind of come down to a couple different things. The first major issue I have is random perks. Littered throughout the skill tree, there are random perks. These are icons with a little question mark on it. When you select these with your skill points, you will get a perk from a random pool. There are some perks that are very good and sought after, and there are some that are not so great. I don't necessarily have an issue with the randomness, but what I do have an issue with is that many times I need a specific random perk for my build. I may have two perks unlocked via the skill tree that are set and I know I can always get, and then I'm just waiting for that random perk to show up. God forbid I need two random perks to complete my build because then we're completely screwed. As I'm sure you've noticed if you're watching the video and not just listening podcast style, the background footage is me trying to get a specific build with Leatherface. I was trying to get Scout, which was a set perk, and was trying to get Hysterical Strength and Violent to roll on the random perk slots. I'm sure you can kind of see where I'm going with this since this is the only B-roll footage in the background of this video. Random perks inherently slow down the process of making a build, to the point where I do feel like it is unnecessary and hinders the build customization process. I'm just an average guy. I have obligations to a job and a family outside of my time for gaming. When I do have time to sit down and game, I don't want to sit for 20 minutes trying to just get the build that I want to play to magically appear. I can understand what they were going for by having these random perks, but the fact that you can just respec and keep gambling until you get the perks you want kind of defeats the purpose. It's adding extra steps that are unnecessary. Someone as crazy as me will sit here for 20 plus minutes until they get the specific perks they want. There's nothing really stopping us, it's just a frustrating road bump along the way. In my opinion, the whole thing kind of came off half-baked. We wanted to have random perks so that each build felt slightly different. However, some of the best perks are locked behind those random perks. People will sit and re-roll their perks until they get what they want if given the opportunity, so why make them random at all? To be clear, I'm not saying that you should not have the ability to re-spec your points or re-roll your perks. I'm saying that this is a poor solution to an issue that was developed by the system itself, so we need to re-evaluate that system. Gun Interactive and Sumo have to have enough perk data at this point to know which perks people are leaning on heavily. They have to know the perks that are seen as must-use by the community and those that are seen as vestigial and almost worthless. I think that if they took some time, they could reevaluate these skill trees and still keep the branching paths that offer dynamic and diverse builds, but do away with the need for those random perks. Maybe the solution is to have those random perks be perks that you can select from a random perk pool. Maybe you only get two or three, so you can't choose a bunch of overpowered perks, but you can still get what you need without sitting and re-rolling for 20 minutes of your limited game time. 
If they really wanted to go the extra mile, they could sit and plot out how they feel each tree should progress. Maybe certain trees cannot get violent because it does not go along with the fantasy that the developers have for that specific tree. I personally would lean towards having the ability to choose which perk from the random pool you want to use in each slot and maybe even limiting those random slots to one or two rather than two or three or four even. Because at the end of the day, by having the ability to reroll, we kind of are already doing this just with extra steps. It's gonna make the user experience better if we can just select, hey, I want violent and hysterical strength. I'm willing to use my two random perk slots to get those. Or going other options that might be beneficial in other scenarios. The second biggest issue I have with perks in general is that some of them just feel flat out useless or they're so hyper specific that they might as well be useless. A great example that I'm sure everybody is thinking of is bringing home the bacon in the Leatherface tree. Carrying a victim highlights Leatherface for all family members. What is the point of this? Aside from giving the family members the opportunity to see the one and only gallows execution that they're likely to see in 100 hours of gameplay, there's no point. Another perk that vexes me is confusing mechanic. After turning on a generator, it takes extra amount of time for the victims to disable it. It's so specific that it makes me wonder why anybody would ever take this over a perk that is more universally useful, like causing bleed damage or getting extra speed. By choosing the confusing mechanic perk, you're playing into a perk that only applies if the victims get to the point where they're going to disable the generator. And that's assuming that it automatically applies when the generator is already on and that you don't have to turn it off and turn it back on for that perk to even be useful. It just adds another layer of complication that is unnecessary for how specific that perk is. That situation's only gonna come up occasionally. Me needing to be a little bit faster so I can catch up with that stupid Julie that's running away is gonna come up more likely than not. The same goes for any of the perks that apply to locked doors. Why would I want to use one of my limited perk slots, banking on the fact that the victims are actually going to use latched doors? Maybe this comes up more often in high level games compared to my mediocre games, but I think I can count on one hand how many times in the last two weeks I've had a game where I even had to barge a door down, let alone a situation where I needed to get it down right now. Something like the Master Key perk for Leatherface, where he can instantly burst through the latch door anywhere from three to five times, feels like it should be intrinsic to his character and might address some of the concerns that we have playing Leatherface that I discussed in my last video. Like, be honest with yourself. Yes, you can choose rubber boots and you will be immune to the electrified cattle grids at the gates, but are you going to use one of your limited brick slots for that specific scenario? I have personally been in games where I have seen the victims get past the electrified cattle grids, sit there teabagging until they decide they want the game to end, but not once have I said, man, next game I really gotta swap over to rubber boots. It just isn't that valuable. At that point, the game's already pretty much over. You may get a hit or two in, but they can still just turn and run. And I guess now that I've discussed both of these points, there is one last thing about perks that really bothers me. The fact that loadouts feel completely pointless. If you don't know, when you're playing a character, you can have specific loadouts saved. However, you cannot save different perk trees between the loadouts. You have to choose these loadouts from the perks you have unlocked already. In most cases, when I unlock perks, there are three specific perks I was going for. There might be an extra one that I switch to occasionally. However, it doesn't come up often enough for me to feel like having other loadouts is a really beneficial thing over just choosing that specific perk. I know some people use the loadouts to control their grandpa perk selected faster too, but it takes two seconds to go over to the menu and swap. If loadouts saved different customization trees and then had completely different perk pools, I could see the benefit. Maybe it's a limitation of the game engine or something, but it just feels kind of redundant and useless right now, especially when most trees are filled with so many filler perks like we talked about. 
I don't know, maybe this is just from a family main perspective. Maybe if somebody in the comments below is a victim main, you can tell me if you utilize the loadout system a little bit more than we do on the family side, but personally, I don't see a great use for it. At the end of the day, I love having the different build options. I love that a lot of the characters can feel dynamically different depending on what you choose and which path you go down. There are some where I would like to see a little more variety built in, like with Leatherface, but on the whole, it feels good to be able to play different dynamic builds. I think we're just at a point now in the game's lifespan where we can sit and say, yeah, some of these things are redundant and useless. Maybe it's time we take another look at them. Like I said, I would love to see random perks be selectable from a pool of perks instead of having to sit and waste my time re-rolling. I would like to be able to save loadouts with different perk trees so I can have dynamically different builds that I can swap to on the fly. And I would like to see some of the perks that are less used reworked so that they can be more useful in more situations. Maybe we add more to them. Maybe we change the specific circumstances of them. I feel like there has to be enough user data available to Gun Interactive and Sumo to reevaluate these trees and make some of the lackluster perks shine a little brighter. But those are just my ideas. What do you guys think? Do you think that there's something specific that they should do to make perks better for everyone? And if you are a victim main, please let me know in the comments below your thoughts on your experience. I have not played victims once my entire time playing this game, so I would really appreciate your insight into your side of the game. And if you did enjoy today's video, please take some time to like and subscribe if you have not already. It just takes a second of your time and it really helps me out more than you could ever know. I really appreciate it. Anyway, that's enough ranting from me today. I hope you have a good rest of your day, a good night, and good luck.